Welcome to Stone Magpie, I'm Suzanne. Um, today I'm going to do a beginner's video so that if you've heard of diamond painting but you don't really know much about it, you don't know if it's for you, you don't know if you'll enjoy it and you don't really know where to start, I'm going to do a video to talk you through the basics that you will need to know before you even purchase a kit. Or if you've already got one and you want to just know a bit more then that's fine, keep watching too. Do please consider subscribing to my channel. I do upload videos for all abilities and I'm always here to help if you need a bit of um, advice, etc. I'm not an expert, but I just think if I can do it, then you can. So let's get started. Okay, one of the very first decisions to make when choosing a kit is whether you prefer round diamonds or square diamonds. I've laid them out here in drills and diamonds can also be known as drills, to show you the difference. With the rounds, they have a very slight gap when you place them um, in the middle. Um, if you imagine four circles all together, in the middle will be a very slight gap. With the squares, they sit very flush together. Um, some people do think they're harder to place, I prefer them, I started doing squares, so there's nothing stopping you starting with squares too. I'm now going to show you a picture to compare both finishes. This is the very first diamond painting that my son actually did. So I'm going to bring it closer up to show you. It is a round, and then you may be able to see what I mean about having a slight gap in between each um, row. So you can see here there's a little tiny tiny gap there. Um, now with both round and square the ideal is to try and get them as straight as possible. Now I can see here that my son has gone a little bit wiggly but it hasn't spoiled the overall effect of the picture. So when you first start please don't worry too much about that. It's about the enjoyment of doing the picture itself. I'm now going to show you a square. Here we go. And this is actually the very first diamond painting that I did. Again, it's not perfect. It's a little bit wiggly in places, but the overall effect is really good. And these are square, like I said. I'm going to bring it a bit further up to show you. And you may be able to see that they sit a lot more flush to each other. So there's hardly any gapping. And that explains the difference between the round and the square. Now we've spoken about those, I'm going to introduce a different type of project which uses special shapes. And so as you can see here, this is a key ring and it has got bigger beads and more jewel-like qualities. And these are special shaped kits. So you already know the difference between the different diamond shapes. So now let's go to Amazon and have a look at the kits available there. And hopefully we'll be able to unpick the description so that you're more informed. So here we are at Amazon's homepage. Right, I am just going to search for diamond paintings and I'm going to put in here low to high price. What will first show up is kits that are very, very cheap, a penny with 6 98 delivery. Now, if you're really excited about getting going and you really want to start straight away, please don't purchase these kits. They're from China and they do take quite a long time to arrive. So I'm going to click on my Prime account here so that we can see some that will arrive a lot quicker. Okay, I'm going to use this lady here as an example. £2.99, brilliant price. So let's see what she's about. For your very first picture, I would suggest going 30 by 30 or 30 by 40. Okay, what I would avoid though with sizes like that is any sort of lettering 
because it just won't be clear enough. Get a nice bold picture. Hopefully the listing will have the canvas picture for you to see what it will end up looking like. OK, I'm going to scroll down and see in the description. Full kit. Great. That means everything's included that you would need. So it includes the canvas, the diamonds, a plastic tray, a sticky pen and the adhesive. OK. We can see here that this kit is round diamonds and if it doesn't mention whether they are round or square I would presume round because rounds are much more common to find than square. Okay also I wanted to check if this was a full drill and there it is in the description full drill which means the whole painting will be covered with diamonds. A partial drill means that there'll be a background that you don't diamond paint. So again, that is personal choice. OK, at this point, I'm going to go over to the pictures. We can see what the picture is um, going to end up like by clicking on the canvas print. OK, when you see this, and it's great that this seller has put one on, it's lovely to see a picture of the actual canvas that you receive because it shows the detail in it. So it also shows how many colours are included in the kit. So this one is 30 by 40 centimetres. Do be aware, sometimes that is the size of the canvas and not the size of the picture. So if you're going to buy a frame, wait for it to arrive, wait for the picture to arrive before you order a frame, just to make sure that the picture is actually that size. Okay, and there you can see the detail that will be on the picture. Each little square will be a diamond that you stick on and I am going to show you that very, very soon. Okay, so hopefully by seeing that you'll be able to unpick descriptions. The main two things that you're looking for is, is it round, is it square, is it full drill or is it partial drill? Okay. I am going to leave you to have a good look at Amazon and pick out pictures that you really like the look of. Exciting! You've had a good look around, you've chosen a picture that you really like the look of and you're very excited to get started. So what do you do next? So your lovely postman has delivered your diamond painting through the letterbox and it should look something a bit like this. Okay, let's open it up and see what's inside. Firstly, you have a toolkit. All right, so you will have your diamond pen with a nib at one end and possibly a multi-placer at the other. We will talk about this bit a bit later. You will also have a tray and a pink wax. The tray may well look like this one or it will look like the ones I used earlier with a funnel at the end. So you'll receive one of those. Okay, um, see what else is in the pack. It should have some, cover off. It should have some diamonds in it. Good. And the canvas itself. All right. So, for this demonstration, I chose a partial diamond painting. So, you may be able to see that the background is greyed out like a painted watercolour effect. And that is not sticky at all. You can see there's a film sheet on it. And as I peel it back, it's this part that is sticky, ready to take the diamonds. It is a little bit creased. We can even it out. Um, normally, I would well. Normally, I would do full drills, and by peeling back this, it will flatten it somewhat. If it is too creased to do that, like this one is, 
I will probably put it under my bed for a couple of days. I have got a divan base though. If you've got a slatted base bed, it might make it worse. So perhaps pop your, you could actually, you could try rolling it this way to see if it helps. Or use a very cool iron over the back of the canvas. But do be careful if you do that because you don't want to melt any glue or make it tricky. Okay, so that hasn't helped really in this case. Okay. I'm not going to flatten this because I want to actually show you what you do to get started. So ignore the creases. Hopefully yours will flatten out and be fine. Okay. The colours... Um, with this one as you can see I've got 12 colours and in this kit I haven't been given the DMC numbers oops I didn't check the packets I just looked at the canvas and thought the DMC numbers weren't included but if you look here 3042 is the DMC number for this colour I'll scroll along and 3743 is the, is the DMC number for this colour. So it's not written on the canvas, but the packets have the DMC number on. So always check the colour packets too. Now, the DMC numbers are important if you want to keep your leftover diamonds for other projects, then you would need to keep them by DMC number. So with this kit we haven't got that so perhaps you could do a project that doesn't have a chart to it. You could make um, little bits of jewellery or decorations, ornaments, make patterns out of the colours instead. Okay so I'll get these out. They are all attached. As you can see I have ordered round. Okay. So we've got round diamonds. Each packet has a number, a big number on it. So number one is number one on your code. Actually, they've done very well with this kit. Well done. <laughs> because the symbol for number one is actually number one. For number two, it is two. For number three, it is three and so on. Believe you me, they like to mix up the symbols, so sometimes the code for one could be eight. <laughs> so this has been well thought through. I am impressed by that. <laughs> OK, so what you would do is you now have a choice of how you would prefer to work on your picture. Um, you could start at number one and do all of the number ones you can see. You, and then move on to number two and then number three and so on. Or you could go line by line. Now for this particular kit and the fact that we haven't talked about storage yet, I would probably go number one first, then number two, etc. Because it's not a full drill, so we don't have lines as clearly as a full drill so that's just a bit of a hint there as well now what I meant about the storage is when you buy a kit that has say 30 colours and they're in packets such as these you can by all means just work from the packets I did that with my first couple of kits it was no problem at all however if you find that too difficult or too cumbersome, if you purchase um, some storage kits, I'll show you what I tend to use. I use these TikTok boxes, Tic Tac boxes from Amazon. And so that means there's, there's 64 Tic Tac boxes, they're all individual. What you would do is put all of your diamonds from number one into here and just put number one on the top okay and then you would have them in the box you'd go number one I need a few of those pour them into your tray 
and then pour them back when you finish that particular part of your picture. So again, the choice is yours, depending on how you want to work it. If you really like diamond painting, you do your first project, you will probably end up buying one of the storage type systems. Okay, so how do we start the actual painting, Suzanne? That's what we want to know. And what is this? Well, let me show you. You get your pen and at the moment it's just, you know, like a hole in the end. But we need that to be sticky to be able to pick up the diamonds. This is what this is for. It's called pink wax and it has a cover on it, like a protector cover. Can you see that there? So you peel that back and basically you dip your pen into it. And now can you see there's sort of a pink bit on the end? I'll do it again and there's a hole in the pink wax there. So it is sticky now on the end. All right, we will open number one. If I can find my scissors, bear with me one moment. So what I would normally do is cut number one off so it's completely separate. I will use the tray that came with the kit, but I personally um, prefer the white ones with the funnel to be able to pour them back in afterwards. It's just a, that bit easier, but the tray that comes with the kit you can use at the moment. You're not buying any extras or anything at all. So. Just cut off, for me, I cut the corner off and tip your diamonds into the tray. You don't have to tip them all in if you don't want to. But on this project, I am going to do all of the number ones first. I might not do it all on camera for you because, you know, you don't want to watch all of that. Okay. This backing, as I say, you peel back. I always tend to keep the backing on the project as I work on it so that I can cover it up again when I finish just to keep the dust, etc. off. You've got your diamonds in the tray. You're going to shake. And the reason you shake it is because you want the diamonds to turn so that the faceted um, parts are at the top. Okay, so the flat bit is at the bottom and the diamond top bits are on the top. Okay, doesn't matter if they're not all in a line, etc. But if the majority are, that's great. Okay, so now I'm going to search for number ones. So you can see down here, I've got like a row of number ones here. You can start wherever you want. I'm left-handed, so I sometimes go right to left, left to right. It really doesn't matter. The great thing about diamond painting is that you can you cannot really make any mistakes. Even if you put the wrong number on the wrong colour, you can pick it off and redo it. It's really good. So, picking up a diamond with the end of your sticky pen and you're popping it whoop, on like that. So you're just picking it up and popping it on top of the number one. And that is it. That is all you have to do. How simple is that? And when you're not being videoed and you're not talking, you can let your mind wander and it is really, really super for mindfulness. It's a great activity for stress relief, anxiety, all sorts of things. Um, I just love it. I absolutely love it and I hope that you do too. So as you can see I've got my row down there. I'm just slightly peeling back. All of this part is sticky and I can see I've got another little row here. So I just do exactly the same thing. Pick it up, pop it down. Uh, 
Okay, right, I'm going to pretend that I've done all my number ones. Now with the packet, because I opened it on the side, this might be quite tricky to get them back in again, we'll see. Mm, not too bad actually, mm, a few spills. That is why I prefer the funnel trays, because they do tip in a bit easier. Okay. Pop those back in. Let's pretend that we've finished number one and we go to number two and we just repeat the process. You cut off number two, you pop it into your tray and off you go. The one thing I did want to show you was this multi-placer. When you first start, you may not want to do that. Um, there is sort of a bit of a technique to it. Okay, um, in fact, right, pretend this is number two, because I'm going to do a line down here. I can see I've got a very straight line. So, tip them into your tray. This time I haven't tipped them all in, doesn't really matter. Shake them. And, and just tip them slightly, because what we want to do is create a bit of a line. Can you see that? If you tap it gently, they line up, particularly here, if you have a look there. All right, with the multiplacer, again, you'll need your pink wax. You just fold back the protective layer, and this time we're going to dip this end into the pink wax as so. Give it a good push in and when you lift it up that will be pink. I just tend to try and scrape off a bit of the excess if it's got a bit overhanging the edge and there we are. So it's exactly the same as this end but this one should fit about four diamonds on it all at once. Okay, let's see about putting four diamonds along this row here. So there, look at that, perfect. Look at those four diamonds there, all in a nice straight line. Just look, aren't they well behaved? So I'm popping my end in boop, to pick them all up. So they're now all in a row at the end of my pen. And I'm just going to go and go boop, like that. So it's just a quicker way of diamond painting. There's two here. So again, I can use this end to pick up two. I'm going to pick up those ones, those, those two here. Just boop, like that, so you can see I've got now two on here. And I'm just going to go and place them on. Should we do a bit more down here so you can see that again? I've got four in a row. And pop them down there. Now, say you're thinking, all oh, right, well, I want four again, but it only picks up three. There we are. It doesn't matter. We can just put those three down. Oh, you see, it left one on. So I've got two in place and a gap. So I'll just go and pop that one on again. I've got three circles left. So there we are, three and pop them down. And all that you need to be aware of is that you're using the face up, you're not using the flat. So can you see I've got quite a lot of flat edges facing up there. I'm not going to use those, I'm going to use the ones that have the rounded top. So that when I place them down, I'm placing them down flat side. I hope that makes sense for you as well. Okay, so I'll show you an example. If I did pick up one of the flat, can you see this little cluster here? Can you see that quite clearly? Sorry, I'm just checking my, there we are. So see that one there, that is flat. So that's upside down. If I pick that up and, and pasted it onto my canvas, can you see the difference there? It's the wrong way up. It's not laying flat. There we are. Whereas the others are laying flat. That one isn't. So that's the difference. 
just pick that off because as I say, there isn't any mistakes in diamond painting. <laughs> and we can continue as we were, one at a time or with the multi-placer, the choice is yours. You can have a little play and if it's not quite straight, you don't like it, you can take them off and do it again. Okay, so I hope that explains how to get started with diamond painting. If you do have any questions whatsoever, and no question is a silly question because everybody learns, we all start somewhere. You know, I'm still asking questions now of people. So please do comment below if you have a question or you want to share what you're doing. I always love to hear from people. Please consider subscribing and I hope to see you next time. Good luck with it. Bye for now.